right, whenever you're all ready, first question. Okay, and I just wanted to, before we turn the page, I just want to follow up again on last week's game and maybe see if you could help with some, some of the thought process and what we're at around on the fourth and 20 plays. So that was one of the options to go back in hindsight. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I've been uh, pretty careful with how I've approached, um, you know, my thought process on that a little bit. I mean, you never pinpoint one play that affects the game. If we don't, if we don't kill the punter in the first quarter, it probably doesn't come to overtime. I mean, how many times did returns win us games last year? Three. So, you know, we got away with it a week ago, but didn't get away with it this week. Not to pinpoint that being the reason that we lost. Um, there's a lot of things that, that, that could have happened throughout the course of the game. Um, when it comes right down to it, we didn't, we didn't finish the right way. Um, you go into the second overtime, our, our job as an offense is to score a touchdown. And we got to the three yard line and did not do that. Um, when defense goes out there, our job in the red zone is to hold them to a field goal, and we didn't do that. Uh, finished games last year really well. Um, didn't finish this game the way that we needed to to be able to win. We would have been lucky to get out of there with a win with as much dumb stuff that happened. It's as simple as that. You know, when you play a Big 12 opponent, when you play a championship game like Cincinnati, uh, you can't do that stuff. And our, our program needs to learn to be more disciplined. There's no question. Too many penalties, too many dumb things. It was a busted, busted coverage on fourth and 20. Dumb. Uh, inexcusable. Our safeties were too deep. I mean, I can get technical. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't play that play like we should. Uh, it would have been very easy to stop them on fourth and 20. The only thing that really you give up is a Hail Mary. So yeah, I, I mean it's bad, but is that why we lost? No, too many too many things happen. Um, you know, red, uh, offense's inability to be able to score touchdowns in the red zone, I could argue, cost us the game. You know, we get down there six times and score twice. That that don't you don't win when you do that. So, <clears throat> you know, well welcome to uh, welcome to our preview of Big Twelve. You know, I've been doing a lot of studying. You know, last week was all about Texas Tech. We go there, man. What a what an atmosphere and what an environment. You know, and I thought our our players handled it very well. Nobody was wide eyed. Nobody panicked. The sidelines were positive. Um, we were excited to be there. We were excited to play. Uh, we were in the game. Made plays. Uh, had a chance to win on the road in the Big Twelve against a team that we got our tail kicked by a year ago. Um, you know, all morning I've been watching Kansas, who we'll obviously get into, you know, go win a overtime game in Morgantown, West Virginia, in front of 55,000 people. You know, the Texas Tech game was sold out, by the way, at 60,000 people. Um, you know, I know up in uh, – Stillwater, they had a big win against Arizona State. You know, there was 55,000 people there. Pretty good atmosphere. Um, up in, in Manhattan, Kansas, Kansas State was uh, 55,000 people watching their team beat a SEC school. Pretty bad, pretty soundly. This is our Big 12 preview. Okay, you got a Kansas team coming that is 2 and 0. Second year head coach, uh, which there very few times. Uh, I can't remember recently when I've coached against a team and I got no history and I got no previous knowledge, you know. I met Coach uh, Leapoid uh, in Scottsdale for the first time, you know, a couple months ago. I don't know, the first time I ever met him. So I've been watching their video all morning and these guys are a problem. These guys are really good and this is their second year, you know. You know, everybody knows they went to Texas last year, game 10, won in overtime 57-56. A uh, week later, they lose at TCU by three. And then a week later, they lose by another one-score game to West Virginia. And now they're 2-0. Uh, they got confidence. They got 
you know, young kids that are getting better and better and better. Uh, they're extremely well coached and they're a very tricky, tricky bunch to prepare for. So for the third straight week, uh, we are facing an opponent that you have to play very good, very sound, very disciplined if you want to have a chance to win. This is our Big 12 preview. Any, uh, any update on him? Uh, he's, uh, we'll see. You know, he's, he's, he's banged up, but uh, we're, we're, it's day to day. Hopefully, he'll be 100% ready to go on Saturday. Did they go to Tayshon? Yes. Uh, Tayshon actually got the other ankle in the game. You know, not as bad as the other one. Uh, probably could have put him back in there, but we were pretty happy with what Brandon was doing, so we went with Brandon and Stacy. Uh, they're a little nicked up, but that's running back. That's running back life. You know, but they're not they're not ruled out by any now, by any means. What, what, what was or is your message to your team now going forward that you know how much? Don't do stupid crap. Yeah, it's as simple as that. I mean, it's just you can't play you can't play undisciplined football. You can't you can't do dumb things that hurt the team. You know, every, we're 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 complaining about playing 103 snaps on defense, well, you know, offensively, we didn't help our defense. We didn't sustain drives, which we've done a good job of that here for the last 15 games. Um, we, didn't, we didn't possess the ball. We didn't sustain drives offensively, okay? Uh, we gave up 35 first downs on defense. You know, our critical downs were good, but if they're getting first downs on second down, then you're going to – you, you got to play the next play. And then we had – six or seven or eight penalties that gave them a new fresh set of downs. Um, you know, you just you can't do stupid stuff. You can't you can't bust assignments in critical situations like fourth and 20 or second and five on the five uh, offensively where we miss ID things and the thing should have walked in the end zone in the second in, in the second overtime It's dumb. You can't do dumb things against good teams, Power Five teams, Big Twelve teams, and expect to win. So get used to it. What's up? You talked about you know those, those great atmospheres you know around the Big Twelve. I mean, how important is it to you, you guys build that? This is kind of my point. Thank you for asking that question. So you know we're um, you know we're in a situation of of you know, change right now, right? And we need, you know, and I was very happy with our, our fans for going to San Antonio and we had great support over there and that, that was awesome. Um, you know, we're, we're in the American Conference and this is just a Big 12 preview, all right? And, you know, we'll, we'll get, you know, it'll be over in a week, okay? But, um, you know, we need, we need, it's good to be at home and it needs to feel like home. You know, and there's just there's a whole lot of things that need to change and and continue to transition. All right, so we got an opportunity this weekend to start to make that transition. You know, are we gonna are we gonna get a lot of people here for this game? This is a big game, man, and it's a preview of what's it's gonna be like for years and years and years to come. Long, long, long once I'm gone and all that. Um, you know, hopefully our, our students, you know, uh, understand that it's important for them to show up. You know, I was very happy with how many students showed up to Cage Rage. You know, that was an awesome deal. Um, but we need thousands of students uh, to, to support the, the school, you know. Um, you know, we're a good football team. You know, we, we lost in double overtime on the road to a Big 12 team. You know, we're a good football team. I would, I'm sick we didn't win. Um, but we're still a good team, and we got a good quality uh, team coming that's hot and, and playing well. I mean, it ain't the Kansas of old, I can tell you that. I've been, I've been in those games for a, a, a long time, competed against Kansas for a long time. Um, they're, they're dang good now. So, you know, our, our fan base needs to understand that this is a big opportunity you know, for, for the University of Houston and what the future is going to be. Um, you know, but all the Big 12 people are here today, you know, and, um, you know, I know I know the commission is coming back on Saturday. He's going to be on Waco for, for a Baylor game, and he's going to come down here on Saturday because this is a preview. 
and we need to have a good crowd, man. So, yeah, that's that's going to be my message, you know, all week, you know, starting with this right now, but we need people to show up. You know, we've always wanted to be in this situation at the University of Houston to be in this conference. Well, here we are. So, where's everybody going to be? Yeah, that's why I'm my I'm hoarse. I can't talk. I mean, it's it's been a long two weeks, you know. But that's what college football is all about, and that's you know, and it's awesome, you know. And, and I'm glad to be back home. Sorry. What have you What have you really liked from what you've seen from your team? What, what they've done two overtime games. You could be two and zero at this point without the mistakes. What have you liked from your team so far? We're resilient. You know, we we play hard. We fight. We don't panic, um, you know that that's all been good. I mean, my message, my message going into this game was, you know, really both games. You know, just you know, just keep playing no matter what. It's gonna be a long game. Keep playing no matter what. We got down two scores in both games, and we didn't panic and we didn't quit. We just fought hard, and 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 got ourselves back in it. Um, all that's good, um, you know. Uh, Again, UTSA had a had a had a similar game up in the, in uh, in at Army uh, where they played. I don't know if it was one or two overtimes, but like it was just one. Yeah, well, ours should have been one too. But uh, um, we uh, just the only two teams in the country that's had this many overtime games. I mean, we we lead it, but uh, good thing I've practiced it. Didn't. But anyway, uh, just hard fought games. You know, I'm, I'm proud of how our guys are handling road games. And not quitting and not giving up. I mean, that's all. That's all good stuff, you know. But we just we got to play more disciplined football. What does what does Coach Lee would what does he do, and, and how is he going to test this discipline that you say needs to, to be? Able well, to it's a it, you know, it, and I'm still studying it. I don't got anything figured out right now, you know. But they're unique on offense now. I mean, they're not going to just drop back like Texas Tech. I mean, they're you know, it's got options, you know, mentality. I mean, it's it's almost like prepping for Navy, you know, with, with athletic people that can make plays. You know, the quarterback, everybody's like, well, how are you going to tackle the quarterback? Well, it's a little different situation with Daniels, who's a really good dynamic player. He's almost he's more of a running back that can throw the thing, you know, as opposed to like what we faced last week with just drop back after drop back. And if, he's, if the guy snuck out of there, he was good enough and athletic enough to be able to to get you know twenty yards um, on you real quick, if you know, and we got to do a better job of containing that, and we didn't do a very good job of containing that at times. Um, this is a whole different animal. I mean, this is this is a lot of offense. Uh, they're really good up front. You know, they're, they're you know they brought a couple of kids with them from Buffalo. Um, you know, that can really play, that know the offense. Um, this staff's unique now. I mean, they've been together for a while. You know, and. They do a lot of stuff, so it takes continuity within your coaching staff to be able to do all this stuff. So we got our work cut out for us defensively. Off, you know, offensively, we, we got to get better. Um, you know, these guys are got good team speed in the secondary. They, you know, they're big up front and they they play they play their tail off. Probably the biggest thing you just notice on video is these guys are excited about playing football. They play hard, you know, and they're coached well. So it's going to be going to be a huge challenge. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and he's going to be in here in a minute. Um, you know, he's he's an interesting guy. I've met, first time I've met him. You know, and I know my, all the other Big Twelve people that are here. I know just because I've been in the league for a long time. But um, Coach Yoma or uh, Commish Yoma is uh, he's an interesting guy. I mean, he doesn't have a football background. He's got a marketing background. You know, and so everything that he's talking about is is marketing and money and. TV, it's all that stuff I don't understand. You know, I'm going to stick to the football side, uh, but it, it, it's pretty exciting. You know, and again, I've been in these meetings for a long time. Like Bowlesby's, uh, you know, he's a football guy. You know, and this is a little different approach, so it's all kind of new to me. But um, you know, he's uh, he's he's it's, he's 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 fun to listen to, and I think he's going to bring a lot of excitement towards the Big 12 and and how you market the Big 12, which is all. Which is all resources. That's going to be awesome for the University of Houston. You mentioned the, the resilience of your team you've seen the first couple of games. How, how have you seen Parrish just continue to 
to lead. Obviously, he's, you know, he's playing. He's, he's not 100%. To put up these numbers to, to really kind of capture what, what you want out of your players and specifically defense. Yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it's you know, we don't give out players of the game and stuff when we lose. And I've never really singled out people when we lose. But I singled out him in our team meeting. It's unbelievable. I, it's the single greatest defensive performance I've ever seen. I've had some first-rounders on defense. I've seen Bruce Irvin sack the quarterback a lot and Carl Joseph just, just wreck things. You know, Logan Hall unblockable Peyton Turner making plays. I mean, we've had some pretty high draft picks that have had – I've never seen an individual performance like Derek Parrish. And here's what sums up Derek Parrish. You know, he was walking off the field and really was talking to Dorchester, but I heard it. And he's, he's devastated because he kind of slipped on the last play and thought he could have got to the quarterback. I mean, dude had, you know, four and a half sacks and 100 TFLs or whatever it is. And he's mad he didn't make the last play. You know, let's get more guys like that that have that attitude and mentality and, and grit and hard work and determination. You know, it, it is amazing. You know, good for him. Um, good for him. He's come a long ways and is, is playing as good as I've seen. You know, and even some of the times he didn't get there, I mean, that tackle knew he was in for a battle. Two personnel items. It looks like Lance Robertson played a majority. Ruben's been hobbled and hasn't been practicing much. Uh, you know, hopefully Tuesday looks better than last Tuesday. So we just we just went with we went with Lance and thought he held up pretty good. Uh, you know, lost his technique there on that last drive and got a holding call, which which hurt us. Um, Get the ball back with five minutes after a missed field goal. You're supposed to, you know, last week we killed ten and a half minutes and went down and kicked the field goal, won the game. Uh, this week uh, we got two holding calls and had to punt. Stupid. And the uh, uh, Keyshawn, is it a matter of, of getting him more involved or has it just been? He's in there. I mean, he got to just be patient and. You know, keep working hard, and he wants the ball. You know, uh, it's it's not like we're it's not like we've replaced him. I mean, he's he's in the game, so he's got to he's got to work hard, and the ball find him. With Last question. With the slower, um, you know, starts offensively. Do you look at those first two series differently? Or are you one of those? Do you believe in you know some coaches like to script you know the first series? How do you sort of look at? Yeah, I guess I've lost I've I've lost sight of how to coach offensive football. We're going to just keep working hard and try to get better. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you all.